Okay, so welcome to week two for A New Age to Freedom. And um, happy Easter to everyone. And Easter is a rebirthing, a renewing. And that's what I feel personally is happening so much in our life and our world right now. So before we get started, what I want to do is I'm going to um, sage. I'm going to just clear the energy and the space energetically and physically and emotionally for, for you guys, for myself, the energy toward the collective. So you can take a deep breath while I'm doing these if you want. I'm also going to light a candle. And this represents that we may be, may, may we be, build, be the light for this new age that is coming in, as well as may we welcome it and remember to hold the light. So I'll burn this the entire call. And then I was drawn to... Um, to pull in the rose quartz tonight. So I'm gonna keep that next to us. And this is all about heart, love, compassion, opening ourselves. And I just figured that could be a wonderful energy to show up with. What I was called about that was the energy of the rebirthing to come from this essence, from the essence of the rose quartz. So, um, so let's just take a moment to all drop in and get very present with ourselves, with one another. And let's just, if you're comfortable to close your eyes, great. If you're driving, please don't close your eyes. And just drop into yourself. So take a few deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Just an invitation to arrive. Just give yourself permission. This is the middle of your day, most likely, or closing toward the end of the day, depending on where you are. So giving yourself time and space to drop in. And if you can, place one hand on your belly sacral area, right around that sacral lower abdominal region and start to bring attention and breath there. And imagine as you're breathing in, you're breathing in space, you're breathing in a ton of space and then exhaling out down through your legs and down into the earth. Every exhale, you're releasing out anything that you are, have on you right now that's not serving you, whether this is emotional or energetic energy you're holding on. Every exhale, give it back to the, the grid of the earth. The, the earth is reforming. There's a new earth that is actually being created. And she's inviting us to take in this dissonant energy that's not serving so we can recycle it, create space in ourselves for the new, which is birthing right now. And I truly believe every single person on this call is invited to be the light, to be the light bearer for this new earth that's being created, for this new lifetime, this new world. Keep breathing and exhaling out, down into the crystalline grid of the earth, let the energy go down, absorbing. Feel yourself very present in your body. Maybe you even start to feel the energy of the earth around you, the elements of the earth around you, supporting you, the wind, the, the earth, the light, the water, all of it, all the different elements. And then bring your attention up, high up to your higher self, the universal energy, spirit energy, God energy your energy up to the crown of your head, beyond the crown of your head, and bring in that sun, beautiful, brilliant, bright energy down into your crown. Take it in through your body, filling yourself up with this light. Renewing yourself with this light that is so beyond this earthly realm. Preparing you and extending your own energetic field to be bright and wide, to be able to hold, maintain, sustain all the shifts all the changes that are occurring. So allow your energy field to get really big. Fully begin, start getting to start to notice what it feels like to be more comfortable perhaps with taking up space, energetic space, being a light. And let your energy field get really big and bright and brilliant and standing out through the room or the area that you're in. 
extending out to the town that you're in or the city that you're in. Let your energy get big. Keep breathing, keep breathing, keep, keep connecting. You may feel yourself connecting with guides or angels or spirits. Just know that there is help and support along this journey with you. Keep breathing. Even beyond the scene around, there is so much support. And let the energy get so big, filling your state, filling your country, and filling this planet. May we call upon our highest self to be with us today, to guide us in this conversation. May we move beyond illusion of this 3D world to recognize and remember the truth of who we really are and the power that exists in us and around us in all moments. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Yay. Okay. So again, I just want to welcome you to the second week of a new age to freedom. And um, everybody's muted when you came in, if you need to unmute yourself or please use a chat box just to reiterate that. So this week, um, <clears throat> what we're going to talk about is I just want to open up with some of you know this and some of you don't my own perspective that I came across when I was um, I was younger. I grew up in an environment, and, and, and the reason why I tell story, I'm just going to reiterate this, is I tell stories so there's a relatability. So there's that moment of when you hear a story, if there's a relatability and you can see it in your life, it might open and expand your, um, your understanding of your own life as you see it through a different lens. It's almost like the opportunity to look outside of your life at like a bird's eye view. Story is so big like that. It really takes somebody out of their own selves to go back into their own selves with greater consciousness. So I grew up in an environment that I didn't feel like I fit in. I just wasn't one of the tribe. And um, it, was, it was an intense environment. And it was, um, it was a very emotional environment. I didn't know how to be in that environment. And I remember um, when I stepped onto the path of consciousness, I read a book at 18 called Celestine Prophecy. And that book opened me up. It was like all of a sudden I, I, was, I felt like it was like a home. I was home. I was like, oh my God, this makes sense. All of this makes sense. And it started to open up this new world of something beyond the physical. And then what happened is I started to just divulge and, and voraciously read and listen to teachers, spiritual teachers, coaches. From the age of 20, I started working with people like Mar Marion Williamson, Carolyn Mays, Tony Robbins. And I remember I was reading a book by Carolyn Mays called Sacred Contracts. And she spoke about this. And this truly changed my life because the only lens that I was looking at life is I'm broken something's wrong with me, I'm doing it all wrong, I'm too much, and I'm messed up. And my self-love meter was like minimal my whole life. And I was doing all of these ways to overcompensate. If I do this, maybe I'll be lovable. If I do that, maybe I'll be lovable. And my own connection with my truth and my own truth of this, the knowing of who I was, the freedom to be me was just, I. I it was so far away from me. I was terrified of that. Because I thought if I really was that, I didn't even know that on a conscious level. I realized that later. If I really was that, well, then I'd really be ostracized, you know? So I remember I was reading a book by Carolyn Mace called Sacred Contracts, and she spoke about this concept that before we come to human form, we're spirit. We're basically energy, we're unlimited energy. And in the spirit realm, we make certain contracts with other spirits. We come into this world to basically grow, evolve, and help the evolution oftentimes, or help heal, or whatever our own work is in this lifetime with other souls in order to contribute and grow and expand. And so we make these contracts with other souls. And so, for example, let's say that you say, you go, okay, I'm going to know, I'm going to go into this lifetime to really understand deep, profound self-love and to never abandon myself. <clears throat> and, you know, and then you get to teach that. You know, we usually teach what we learn, and then I will walk through this world and teach that. And then you come into human form, and you forget 
we totally forget. We, we think we're these bodies. We go through the birth canal. You know, it's like everything. We start to experience life. Life starts happening to us and things can feel and be challenging. We start to experience things like emotions and challenges and all these things. And, and then over time, what let's say what happens is, is that, you know, maybe you meet somebody and you start dating and you're with them for, let's say you're in your late 20s and you're with them for three years. And all of a sudden, this person that you love more than anything totally abandons you. And your heart feels so broken. And at that moment, the lens, the perception we look at it is, oh my God, this is happening to me. Where the spirit perspective, and this is what woke me up, is the perception of, oh my gosh, I get to stop, learn to stop abandoning myself and love myself and not let that be a reflection of me. And I'm going to keep choosing me regardless of what's occurring out there, regardless of whether or not that person chose to stay. That one simple perspective for me changed my entire life. I looked at my parents, my family, my upbringing, my challenges in my, in my school, my challenges through with money, my challenges with everything, all that was happening for me. And it made me who I am. And it gave me the gifts. You know, oftentimes our, our biggest challenges or the, our the greatest and even internal obstacles are our gifts when we allow them, the opposite of them are our gifts that we get to offer the world. And so the reason why I'm posing that to you tonight is just to maybe start to have a different perspective. I don't know where you are. And I'm also just want to remind you, I'm not pretending to tell you guys anything you don't already know. Again, I think once we become human, we just forget, we fall asleep. So the other thing that I want to say as far as this perspective is that um, in the spiritual realm or, you know, yoga or whatever, you might hear, you know, the word grounded, like get grounded, be grounded. <clears throat> and what's interesting is that I always, my whole life, have always felt more connected with that realm. You know, I've always felt more connected with stars. I remember I used to go lie down by um, this the sound where I grew up in New York, and I used to lie under the stars and I, at nighttime, and I would just, by myself, and I just felt like that was home. And um, what I'm starting to understand about this earth and grounding, and like I spoke about in the beginning of this rebirthing and this new age that we're coming into, is that that to me, what I believe and what I'm guided to experience and pointed to all the time in my own inner knowing through my own guides is that there is a new earth a new grid being created underneath us right now. And so to me, the essence of grounding is, is, is different. It's a, it's a grounding in a way that, that there is a, a deep expansion and connection, and it's not a grounding to the old. And I can't even, I don't have language for it, but there's something about that that is giving me my personal freedom of wow, like I, <clears throat> I can finally let myself be really bite, bright and really big and I'm not as scared and here's why. When I say the, the crystalline grid of the, of, the, of the earth, of our world, of our planet is expanding to me, we live in the most awakened time ever with more light beings ever. That means that for those that maybe have, maybe some of you can relate and not feeling like you fit in, you know, or you know of people, right now, there are more of us right now. Um, and in that, it's almost like I feel safer to ground into this earth, where before all I wanted to do was dissociate from my body, get the hell out of here. So I just want to let that land for a second. And if anything's coming up, feel free to open it up through the chat or anything like that. So um, any questions, anybody want to say anything to what I just said or have any curiosities or insights that I, to what I just said before we go on? And if you can't unmute yourself, maybe let me know. Okay, cool. 
Thanks, Steve. Steve said you're saying it. <clears throat> so Steve, would, I would imagine he's agreeing that it fits him. <laughs> Hi, Beto. <laughs> um, so I want to just talk about this, this personal, this, this human perspective for a moment. Last week, we spoke about the wiring of the brain. And if you weren't able to be on that call, it is up on the YouTube channel but we spoke about the patterning of the brain, about how the brain learns and we learn through patterns and patterns can get deeply ingrained. <clears throat> and the way in which they show up oftentimes is through resistance, which I'm gonna get into in a moment. But I wanna talk about the way that we experience our reality here on earth. The only way, and I'm, and I'm gonna invite you to take this in, and some of you, you might hear it, you might go, eh, like what, you know? And some of you might hear it and you might go, Oh yeah, and some of you, and, and what I ask you is just let it land, just let it sink, and just maybe consider revisiting this every once in a while. So the only way we experience our, our we only, the only way we, we experience life is through our thinking. That's it. The only way we experience anything is through our thinking. We have a thought about something, we're looking through a certain lens and that thought, it becomes our reality. Whether it's the candle that's burning, you have, you, you have thinking about the candle, therefore the candle is this. Or let's say, like it's story, if you will. Like I have a told, I have a complete story about my childhood. If you ask my mother, my mother might have a completely different story about my childhood. If you're married, if you have two people, friends of yours that got a divorce, you ask one person what happened, they tell you. The other person what happened, they tell you. Totally two different stories. They both have different experiences and it's because of the thinking they had about what occurred, about what happened. Yeah, perception is reality, totally, Alicia. And so the only place our consciousness comes from is through our thinking. Now, here's the thing. As human beings, we have over 70,000 thoughts in a day. Most of them are repetitive. Most of them are catabolic, remember lower frequency. Most of them are limiting beliefs, thoughts, things we picked up along the way, past experiences, so on and so forth. So what, I don't know about you, when I first stepped onto the path of consciousness, what I first wanted to do was, well, I'm just not gonna think those things. I'm just not going to think of, which is so, it's so funny to me, you know, like when I think about that for me now and no judgment, if, if that's your thinking at all, but we're operating 90% from our unconscious. We have over 70,000 thoughts in a day. That means most of our thoughts are unconscious. How the heck am I going to catch those thoughts? You know, it's just not, it's not possible. And the truth is, is that Remember, at catabolic thoughts, they're not bad thoughts. They're just catabolic. They're heavy. They're dense. Yet what I know is that when I have a lot of catabolic thinking, I start to go on a thought train that I start, I don't, I don't feel as good anymore. And then what happens is that the actions I take aren't usually of a high frequency. Maybe that's when I'll react in life, right? So it's just understanding we're going to have catabolic thoughts. We're going to have repetitive thoughts. And like I spoke about last week, it's not about stopping the thoughts. It's once we become aware and we get to focus and put our attention on new thoughts and create a new patterning. And so what I call this, the, the repetitive thinking, the thinking of what we already know, whatever, it's limited. It's limited. It's called our personal thinking, our ego thinking. And I'm going to go into ego in a moment. So it's limited. We only know what we know. That's it. And that's, uh, that's going all day long. It's like all day long right <clears throat> now imagine this 
simultaneously, we also have something called universal mind, universal wisdom, innate wisdom flowing through us in all moments. This is what turns an embryo into a baby, an acorn into a tree. We don't have to do anything. It's like you don't have to think about the blood pumping through your body right now. Pump, pump. Or the, when you get a scab on your, on your, I mean, a cut on your arm, you don't go, okay, scab, scab away. You know, like create a scab, let's make sure I heal. It just happens. So that is also coming through us. And because we're human, the way we experience life is through our thinking, right? We got this thinking mind. Well, we get, sometimes we get insight. We get ideas. So the invitation again and again in life and through these calls is going to be to give ourselves permission to create a little bit of space from that personal limited thinking, whatever space looks like for you. Maybe that's pausing. Maybe that's going out on a walk without your headphones on. Maybe that's sitting, sitting outside without your computer or your phone next to you for five minutes. Maybe it means taking a few deep breaths in the middle of the day. I don't know. Maybe it needs quiet in your home for a little bit or eating in silence. I don't know. But I often hear from people that I have the greatest insights when I'm in the shower. I hear that all the time and I do too, by the way. Because there's no other noise. And I don't know if you guys are noticing it. It's one of the most juicy things that I'm experiencing right now in this time, like of, of of where we're all being, you know, asked to go inside. It's so quiet. I'm in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, and it is usually really loud and a lot of people. And right now, like, I'm like, oh, I can hear the birds and I can feel the wind and I can hear the wind and it's amazing. So instead of what we're, you know, what I starting to watch is we are in a very filling, filling, filling world and busy, busy, busy and out there life. And, and I'm wondering as we are invited to go inside more consciously, instead of just finding ways to fill and calling people just to have a conversation and just to feel like you're connecting or being on Facebook or I should create because people are saying they're creating and I should right now. So I should do that. And it's like, I don't know about you, but what I'm learning in life is I want to I want to move, I want to take action, I want to create out of inspiration, not out of obligation. I want to be inspired to move my body, to call someone, to take action, to not take action. And so sometimes these inspirations, sometimes these creativities are oftentimes they happen in spaciousness. They happen when we allow our personal thinking, again, it's not going to go away, it's not supposed to. But if we just let it go off to the periphery a little bit sometimes, and you guys, it's moments, it's seconds when that happens. Any questions around personal thinking versus universal mind or innate wisdom flowing through you or anything like that? Questions, insights, curiosities? So does that make sense? Is anyone kind of like a little bit uncertain about the piece of how you, we have our personal thinking, how we can get hooked on our personal thinking and we believe that that personal thinking, that's what it is, that's what it is, that's what it is. And then all of a sudden something happens and you open up to something totally different that's possible. Does everybody have their own experience or does anybody need a certain story or insight? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to just tell you a story. I just, something inside of me is telling me to tell you a story. So I'm going to tell you a quick story. So I'm going back to Colorado, May 22nd. Oh no, this is another, this happens all the time, you guys. This is what's so fun about it. Um, just yesterday, 
um, I was like, oh no, I'll tell you this one. <laughs> so I'm going back May 21st, although now it's May 22nd. And um, I was like, oh shoot, I need a place to go and I, I'm going to have to uh, incubate. That's not the word. What's the word? You can't hibernate. No, not hibernate. What's the word? Somebody give me the word. You know when you can't be around people? Quarantine. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have to quarantine myself and I, I'm moving in to, I rented a room from someone that's, I'm going to live there for five months. And I was like, shoot, where am I going to live? And I, I started to have, my personal thinking was like, you got to figure this out. You got to do something. You got to figure, who are you going to go? Where are you going to stay? You're totally host, Valerie. What's going to My personal thinking was like, and I was like, and I noticed anxiety in me. And normally when I fall asleep, that part of me goes to take action and she's fierce. Like that's all she can, can think about. That's all she's, I'm like, Rah, I have a job to do and I have to do it because I'm the one in charge. And if nobody, if I don't do it, nobody's going to do it. And I'm hosed and da, 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 da. And I just was like, okay, that doesn't feel good. So I'm just going to wait. I'm just, before I take any action, I'm just going to wait. And I just waited and I started to get insight and I, I get information through my guides. That's just me. I have since I was a child. My guides talk to me and all of a sudden I get this insight and it goes, ask Bob. So I, I called my friend Bob in Steamboat. I said, Hey, you know what? I don't know why I'm supposed to ask you. Do you know of any place that I could stay and quarantine myself for two weeks when I get home? And he's like, Oh yeah, I have a 34 foot mobile home and it's right downtown if you want to stay in it. And I was like, Oh my God, what? And check this out. I've been wanting to live in, I've been thinking about getting an Airstream or something similar to it for two years, contemplating living more remotely, not really sure if I want to. Well, now it ends up that I'm just going to live there for the entire time I go back. So not only do I have a place to quarantine, I have a place alone. And I also now get to get to experiment if I like it or not. And it wasn't about me, right? Yeah, right? Woo! And it wasn't about me going, grr, 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 I have to do this. Anxiety, overwhelm, overwhelm. I just was like, Whoo! and then it came through. That's what I'm talking about. We have insights all the time. And if we give ourselves just a little bit more space and we drop back into our own self and we let that, that, that um, personal thinking go a little bit to the periphery, that's what I call magic. It's extraordinary. Um, how does one open themselves back to the universal mind when feeling pulled into the individual mind? How does one stay in the flow, calm state that you're describing? I love that question, Steve. Um, so, okay, let's cover the first one. How does one open themselves back to the universal mind when feeling pulled into the individual, individual mind? So for me, there's a few different things. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so when I use when I witness myself really really stuck and glued on to a certain train of thought, if you will. Um, I find that I really notice my body is tense. So, so awareness, like we spoke about last week, awareness is always the first step. Without awareness, we don't even know it's there. We're doing our thing. You guys know either people like this in your life that just keep doing the same thing, getting the same result, complaining about the same exact thing, yet doing the same thing. They're, it's almost like they're not aware. They don't have thinking about it yet. And we can't make someone have thinking. We can't make it. We can, we can ignite them to see it. We can, we can point them in a certain direction. Yet we can't be like, this is it. This is it, don't you see it? Until they're ready to see it. And so, so that I'm just pointing that out because we become aware. We go, oh, okay. And I notice I get on this thought train of anxiety and worry and feeling like, you know, like, like, oh my God, there's so much on my plate. Oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. Oh my God, there's so much tension in the world. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm on this thought train. And my body starts to get tense. 
And so I don't know what any one person needs in that moment, but this is what helps me. I, I remember it for what it is. Like, for example, I was going to, I taught this morning. I taught two classes before this, two yoga classes. I haven't taught in months. And I noticed I started to get tension in my body. And I noticed I had a lot of insecure thinking. Who am I? I'm not good enough. There are so many better teachers. I mean, it was like, so I was aware of it. And how I knew for me was my body first. And I just labeled it for what it was. I was like, oh, I'm having insecure thinking. And, and what, I, what that does in the moment is recognizing it for what it is, is it's not, it's not, I'm not insecure. I'm not giving it, you know, I'm feeling insecure, yeah. I'm feeling insecure because I'm having insecure thinking. So I label it. I'm having insecure thinking. I'm having a lot of it right now. And then the other thing, what I did in that moment was I allowed myself to hold both in me. I held like, I'm really excited to teach and I'm having a lot of insecure thinking and I'm nervous. I'm really excited to connect with community and I feel like I'm gonna throw up because I'm so nervous. I haven't taught in so long. What if I screw up? I'm feeling really excited to teach and I just hold them both. And for me, holding them both, it just gives space and it almost like neutralizes it because it's not negating or resisting or making myself wrong for having insecure thinking or for being in that place in the first place, because that was my old tendency. Like what's wrong with me? I need to, I know better. That's the best. When you start to become conscious and on this path, it's like, I should know better. I shouldn't do that. And I'm like, wait, why not? You're human. You know, you're going to get caught on the thought train of stinking thinking. Okay. But the more we think it's a problem, the more we think we're broken, the more we try to write, we, 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 whatever we resist continues to persist. Instead of when, for at least for me, one of the things I do is get to hold them both. And what that does for me then is it takes me from this wound up place in my body and my chest. It takes me to a settling. Does that help, Steve? Do you have any questions about that that you want to bring up? I can unmute you. I, maybe I can't. I don't know why I can't unmute you. Right. Oh, I, I unmuted you. Do you have anything you want to say to that or add to that or curiosity? Yeah, it's coming from... I feel like uh, my, uh, my thoughts become tunnel vision sometimes. And I can, uh, so like awareness, I'm aware of it most of the time. Um, stress or like in my face, kind of like a, just a, I don't know, like a weird energy in the face or in my heart or just kind of like stress, anxiety. Um, and I'm, I can register the thoughts that I wish I did not have those thoughts, <laughs> um, yet they're there. And so like my, where I would hope to be, so I don't know if this language is serving, uh, where I would hope to be is always thinking in the, like the universe or like the, 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 the bigger picture, um, how to not focusing on myself in the moment, but I, I catch myself in there. And then I like, sometimes I like, I want, I want to like not be in that state, um, but I'm there. And so I'm like, um, <laughs> if I didn't know that it, that it wasn't what I wanted to be there, it would be okay. But I know <laughs> that I don't want to be there. Uh, so it's like, uh, it's like noise and uh, is that? Yeah. So I'm, That's I'm trying to find a way to shift. Oh, out of that. Yeah. Um, that that was 
not making myself wrong in the moment uh, is very helpful. Yeah, yay. That's good. You know, and I don't know if you're, a, again, I, I, don't, I don't believe in, I think having a toolbox and tools is really useful in life, but I couldn't say, hey, Steve, in those moments, pick up tool number 98, make sure you use that one. I don't know what you need in that moment. Every single moment is different and you show up as you are and you might have to dig into your toolbox and use eight of them. You might have to do mantra. You might have, and I don't want to say have to, you might choose to do mantra. You might, you might choose to take a deep breath. You might choose. And in the end, like, I almost sometimes think of it as, I think about two, two partners, a husband and wife fighting and it's like, or, or they're about to fight and you can tell there's tension. And, and I remember I used to do this with my ex. I'd be like, honey, I love you too much to argue. So I'm going to walk away. I love you but I'm going to walk away because I'm going to say something I don't want to say right now. And, and some, instead, what we often do is we go, rawr, rawr, more, fight, arr, defend, arr. and we're not in our, we're not in our, uh, we're not in our higher brain anymore. We're literally in that moment reacting from our ego, trying to prove, trying to defend, we're resisting whatever is, Basically, you're doing something that I don't like. You're doing something that I want to change. And you're not, I don't like what you're doing. And you're not doing what I want you to do. And they're doing the same thing. And it's this. Well, that in that moment, that's almost the invitation for that as well with our own selves. It's like there's a conflict inside of our own selves, you know, that is in, instead if we just go, hey, hey, Steve, I love you too much to keep making you wrong for this. I love you too much to keep making you wrong for this. You're human, dude. You're going to get on the thought train. There's nothing wrong with it. It's okay. Because there's probably a thought, a thought in you that's saying, you got to do it right, Steve. And not only right, you got to do it perfect, Steve. You got to get it right all the time, Steve. Especially if you're going to walk around being the, 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 the good person you are. Because if people see and they know that your shit stinks, well, then you're really up shit's creek. So you, you got to make sure you keep it tight and real and nice all the time with the bow, you know? That's a lot of fucking pressure, <laughs> right? I mean, one of the things I'm loving about this time, you guys, is like, I'm having so much fun with myself. I'm like playing with myself. I'm like, woo, I'm awesome. I feel like I'm building myself love muscle right now, like nobody's business. It's awesome. And what's funny, just to give you an idea, is I talk to people that are alone, and this is what they say to me. It's really hard to be alone in this time right now. And I'm like, wow, that's so funny. I don't have that thinking at all. I have thinking of, oh man, this is awesome. Could I feel moments of lonely? Absolutely. But I just check in and I go, oh, I'm having lonely thinking right now. Well, what else, what else can I think? Right? So it's just, if, if we give ourselves that permission to just go, oh, I'm just having a human moment. Oh, I'm just, so I'm glad you, I'm glad you heard that, Steve. And again, you guys, these are conversations. That's all we're doing. I know I'm, it's basically a monologue and then you guys are coming in whatever, but what happens is, is that this, this information, it starts to come in and it lands. It's like, I think of it like, you know, when you blow one of those, yeah, language, I'm going to lose it, but you know, those, those, whatever those are, those seeds, you blow them and they go all over and they land. You make a wish, dandelions, but they're turned into the puffy thing, whatever, you know what I'm saying. And so you blow it and that's what, and like slowly they fall to the ground. That's what's happening right now. It's not a matter of, okay, wait, I have to remember, wait, what was I supposed to do again? And I, I gotta, it's in this moment. We get to practice right now, trust. Trust that we're getting precisely what we need. Our soul is awakening precisely when it, when it, need, when it needs. And the more we kind of dance with it instead of dance against it, like we've got to do it in a certain way and there's a mission, we've got to do it right. We're in that limited thinking again because there is no right way. There's only your way and there's my way and there's, and there's, Alicia's way, you know, and their Sal's way. That's it. So when we stop getting rid of, and that's what I feel like a lot of the old 
the old earth is, right? It's like that there's a right freaking way. Sorry, I don't think there is. And I have gotten into conversation, conversation with people about that where they, we don't see it eye to eye. And I'm like, cool, agree to disagree. I don't believe in it. I don't think there's a right way. I don't know why I went off a tangent. Whenever I go on tangents, I always trust it. I just trust it. Like somebody was supposed to hear that. Okay, good. <laughs> Yay. So um, thank you for that, Steve. I love your shares. I love your shares. Okay. So um, I just want to speak uh, uh, briefly, not briefly. I want to talk about <clears throat> um, resistance for a moment. So the way in which we start to wake up is the, is the reason why, well, let me, let me say this. The reason why I often say the word space or I talk about creating space and just giving a little bit of space from this personal thinking that's very loud, it's never going to stop is because then we can hear the whispers that come through. The whispers saying, hey, you might wanna just check in with, do you still wanna do that? Do you still wanna meet with, talk to this person? Do you still wanna be in this job? Do you still feel really happy living in this place? Do you maybe wanna have a conversation with this person? So we listen for the whispers and we get to hear that in that more spaciousness. Because what happens is, is that when we do that, we're in more of the flow of life. Then we don't have to get the two by four, right? I have so many stories of the two by four coming in because I'm trying to do it the way that I think it should be done. And then life comes in and is like, okay, well, you know, here's, here's a knock. Okay, you're not getting that. Okay, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna do this a little. Oh, you're, not, you're still not getting that. Okay, just so you know, I'm gonna wake you up to that, right? And I'm, I'm sure you can all relate to some, on some level because, but eventually we start to hear the shouts and the universe is guiding us to find our way, always to find our way. Um, and if we pay attention to the little breadcrumbs sometimes that the universe is leaving, leaving us, it's really useful. Like maybe in a conversation, Somebody says something, like I said, and we have a new insight. We have a new insight. We, we see something we weren't able to see before. We start to pay attention. Maybe it's through a film we're watching and we, get, we hear a song or we hear a message and we go, whoa, I never thought about that. And now all of a sudden the penny starts to drop and those, those little dandelions start to drop off, right? Yeah, Stephanie said, I want to find more time daily to listen. That's awesome. Yeah, and, it, and you know, it's not, like, the thing is, is that oftentimes people think it's about, like, sitting in your cave and oming and, and meditating for hours at a time. I mean, I, I think meditation is wonderful, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about pockets. I'm talking about moments. I'm talking about, I spoke with a client. This client is so wonderful. She's brilliant. She owns her own company. She's growing. She's all this stuff, but she's constantly doing. She's constantly creating all the time. And we had a session the other day. And I, I love sessions. I love my clients. I have the best time with my clients. I feel like I grow leaps and bounds when I work with my clients and I'm co-creating like some stuff, like talk about downloading and, and, and insights. I talk to them and I say stuff. I'm like, where did that come from? It was because I was just present with them. And I just was reading their energy and we're just having this flow of conversation. We're both getting pop, 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 insight. And so anyway, I'm talking to her and she's like, yeah, you know, she goes on runs and she's like, you know what I've been doing? She's like, I've been thinking about space more and more. And she's like, and I started to go on runs without listening to anything. And she said, and it's amazing. And I'm hearing things I never heard and I'm, I'm experiencing things I never experienced. I'm having insights. And so for her, she's adding these little pockets here and there. When you, if you were to go and study some of the most successful, and successful is all relative anyway, financially or worldly or whatever, they stop and pause often. You know, I'm, I'm right now totally addicted to billions and on Netflix. I don't know if you guys watch that. It's about the stock market. It's awesome because the, because the coach on it is badass and um, it's called billions. But the guy that's the main billionaire in it, he has a meditation room and he sits and you'll often see him just sitting for a while. He'll just sit there 
He'll just sit there and someone will walk in and he's just sitting because he's letting space happen. He's letting these downloads happen. So Steph, when you say you want to find daily time to listen daily, it's like, I think the more we just learn to incorporate either moving more stilly or slowness or whatever, I, I, I mean, there's possibility there. So I think it's a great intention to put out there. Um, okay. So I want to talk about, um, I'm just looking at my notes because there was, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. I want to talk about ego really briefly. Um, I think the ego gets a bad rap. And I often hear people say they want to like dispel their ego and get rid of their ego. And, and if that's what you believe, that's cool. And I, whatever, I mean, you know, I, I'm not judging it. And that's what I used to think, but I had new thinking. I had new insight and I started to see it from a different perspective. And so if your perspective is, is the ego is bad and I want to kill it, maybe just for a moment, just if you would just put your personal thinking to the side and just allow your aperture to be a little wider to maybe see and hear something from a slightly different perspective, like tilt your head a tiny bit, right? <clears throat> so I believe that the ego is here to keep us safe, right? To protect us from the saber tooth tiger, survival. What we spoke about last week, we're all hardwired for survival. The ego is actually there to protect us. I believe that the ego has gotten excessive. I believe that it thinks it needs to protect us from everything in every single moment, from somebody hurting our feelings, from losing a job, from getting hurt when we walk on a street or cross the street when there's somebody on the other side that looks a little different than us, right? I think it's just gotten excessive. Somebody has a weird look on their face. That's the best. Like I sometimes go in to speak at these things. People don't know me. And I remember one time I spoke at this thing and it was a corporate event and it was, we had a breakout and people were coming in and I'm handing out my business card before we get started. And this woman sits down, she looks at me and she just goes, Ugh. puts crosses her arms and looks at me and I was like, Oh, I must remind her of someone. <laughs> and it was so funny. It was like, she had thinking about me before I even opened my mouth, you know? And it's like, we don't even know what we're coming to the table with, but that's that protection of, who knows, maybe I remind her of a, of a girl that used to make fun of her when she was in middle school and that triggered something inside of her. And now she feels like she has to protect herself, right? We don't know. So it's just gotten excessive, right? And, uh -oh. And, and what I think happens often is that the way in which it shows up is when we, when we know we want something or we know we're moving in a direction, but there's something else inside of us that either feels obligated to do something different, that's used to doing something different, that's more familiar to do something different and there's an internal conflict. And then in internal conflict, we resist. And remember you guys, most of this is happening unconsciously. So we all, going back to last week, we create resistance patterns. And resistance patterns keeps us, our ego, living and breathing. It keeps it alive and going inside of us. So I'm gonna talk about the different ways in which we might resist. <clears throat> so I'm all over the place. I will bring it back. Okay. So a huge way in which we resist, especially in this day, day and age, I spoke to it a little bit, is we busy ourselves. We just stay really, really busy. We we always do so much. And you know, especially because I was um, thinking about this recently, like we don't really, a lot of us don't hold nine to five jobs anymore, you know? So, you know, chances of us working beyond our working hours or just filling, 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 
that we're gonna, it, it, what that does is it allows us when we're so full to avoid the elephant in the room. It allows us to avoid the things that we might know we need to do or we might know we wanna do, but we start to resist inside of us, right? So that's another thing. So busying is a way that we resist. Um, apathy, a feeling of being unmotivated. Like see, starts to, we start to look through the lens of there are so many obstacles, there are so many things out there that moving forward takes so much energy that it's just better to do nothing. So another way we might resist and be in a pattern resistance is through apathy, non-action, and just letting that be. I hear this often is, well, I'm just a procrastinator. Again, it's the thinking we have about something. It's the thinking we have of our own selves in certain situations. We make that all of a sudden be our identity, right? I, I have procrastination tendencies. And instead of it just being this pattern that I'm in, I'm a procrastinator. Whoa. Well, now I'm real. That must really be me. So now everything I do just expect me to procrastinate. And that's what we do. We kind of label ourselves to these resistant patterns. Um, so another way we might resist and our ego kind of steps in is through confusion. You know, there are so many choices, so many things, there's so much information, information overload, um, endless possibilities. And so some people feel like they need to research endlessly before they can make a decision. It keeps them in a state of just being here and locked. You know, I know someone, he took two and a half years to decide what kind of a couch he was gonna get. No judgment, but, but it just, it keeps that in that place of like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And it's that busyness and that resistance. So think about space again, we're limited. We have limited energy. That's taken up a lot of space. Well, no wonder why if it's heavy and there's so many, so many things and I have so many options and so many things out there, well, well forget it. Well, then I'm not going to bother, right? Um, so the other thing is through powerlessness. And, and, and this is a big one. This was a big one for me. Um, we, we feel we're embedded in a system of control. We, 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 we want to change something, but we feel like we can't because we're at, we have to stay within these certain bound, bounds. We have to exist within this certain kind of way of thinking, way of being. Maybe that's could be religious, could be whatever, but we're, we're limited by that. So it, that creates a resistance inside of ourselves because we have certain thinking that that is the way and that's the only way. And if we're not in line with that, well, then we probably shouldn't take any steps or shouldn't move forward in the first place. Another way that we have resistance is self-sabotaging. We start to trip ourselves up. We start to trip, uh, trip our upper limit. Things start to get good. We start to get on a roll. We start to get on the flow. Things start really good. And we start to do things to sabotage ourselves. Maybe we pick a fight. Maybe we make a really bad decision, even though we're, we know our, you know, our gut saying, don't do it. <clears throat> Overthinking, over-rationalizing is another way we resist. So the mind is useful. And this is what I, what I think is fascinating. I use a tool called the human design when I work with my clients now. And, um, you know, one of the things it talks about these different centers in our body. And one of them is out of the nine centers is our head. The thing that I think that's fascinating about human beings is I look at our heads as 2% of who we are. Most of us are operating as if we let our heads make all the decision. We, we, we think we need to figure everything out and know everything before we can make a decision. And it's fascinating to me because if we really let ourselves be energetic beings, my body tells me way before my head does. My head's a good judger. My head can help me discern. But personally, I don't ever personally want to make a decision for my head. I don't know why I went there. I went there for some reason, I'm sure. But I guess the point, what I'm going back to just is the overthinking, over-rationalizing. Um, but our mind's not in the change, in charge of our awakening. And I'm going to add on top of that, another way we resist awakening or opening or stepping on this path even deeper, the path of consciousness, the path of, the path of enlightenment, the path of really becoming these big, powerful beautiful beings in this lifetime is we, um, we, we think we need to um, get more degrees. We need to study more. 
We do need to, you know, make sure we get those certain letters by our name. We need to take certain classes before we can call ourselves an expert in this area or whatever. And I think sometimes that can actually stop us from stepping into our true empowerment and allows us to play small. Um, yeah, I have a question on thinking versus feeling versus intuition, goals versus flow, rigid schedule as waking up and dancing to the music. Do you wanna, I'm gonna open it up for a moment. Can I open it up to you to say a little bit more of that? Oh, oh. you can unmute yourself, I think too, okay. Oh wait, I can't hear you. You are unmuted, but now, oh. So I've lived life in different structures before. And so I've lived in the structure where it's um, every time block, every 30 minutes, every 15 minutes is like planned out. And then I've lived in the lifestyle structure where I wake up in the forest and then I'm like, hmm, hmm, what direction would I like to walk today? Um, <laughs> and so like the um, operating out of, so like Tony Robbins would be like, um, clearly define uh, who you are, what you believe in, mission statement, and then, you know, make a crystal clear map to get there. Um, and so I found like results both acting in that way. And then also I'd say the most productive time though was being free and just like, and just letting not this, but the heart lead the path. Um, and I'm confident when I feel like I'm in flow state, you're talking about the story where you just kind of released and then you ended up sourcing this RV, like this perfect thing. It's like, Oh my goodness, you, all you had to do is just like, listen. And then like the, you know, the world, the universe just opens up to you. Um, <laughs> I want to be in that state always. And I'm not, sometimes I feel like I'm in that state and then I feel confident in letting my intuition, my feeling um, guide my decisions and then letting my mind create the plan for strategy. Um, but when I don't feel like I'm connected in that way, um, things don't seem to be like opening up in front of me. Um, my default is to be like, all right, well, I'm not doing anything right now. Uh, not doing stuff equals uh, bad stuff. And so I must find a action plan to start doing. What do I, what should I be doing right now? And let's make an action plan. So I'd like, if you can do yeah. that, cause <laughs> I've been like back and forth and back and forth and yeah. What I do want to point out, if I may, is just this. Um, <clears throat> so I look for the source of where our suffering comes from, right? And when I say suffering, what I mean is we have tension. It's internal conflict. It's tension in our body. It could show up physically. It could show up emotionally, but we get tense. And in that moment, what I heard was you were in the flow, and then you're, when you're not, and then you notice when you're not in the flow, and you notice things are a little bit more hard. And then what happens is, is that what I heard you say is in that moment, you started to have thinking about where you were and the thinking you had about where you were was, and I'm going to add language to it. I must be doing something wrong. There's a problem. Something's not right. I have to do something different. I need to figure out what I'm going to do. And I have a feeling a lot of people on this call can relate to that. And what I'm pointing to is this is that all I know for me is that in those moments when I notice that I'm doing two things, my personal thinking is starting to come in and I'm believing it. I'm really believing it. I'm believing that, oh my God, there's a problem, 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 problem. Now I'm getting limited in my thinking. In addition to that, the other thing that's happening is I'm trying to now figure out how to get out of this. I'm trying to figure it out. And it's the whole idea of the level of thinking is what got me here in the first place. 
So the more I'm trying to figure it out, that's like having one foot on the gas pedal going, I want to go in this direction and the other foot on the brake that's at the same time, right? It's like, I can't, oh, I want, but I can't, oh, you know? And, and so what, what, I, what I want to point to in those moments is, you know, again, I don't know what's going to quote unquote, take you out of those moments because I don't even know if you need to get out of those moments per se. But what I am saying is this, what I got real clear about when you were talking is that when you are in the flow state, you have an innate knowing that this is a big yes in you and you're aligned. You know what alignment is. All I wanna say is, yeah, flipping who? Do you know how many people don't even know what that is? Seriously, you know what alignment is. That's a touchstone, but it's an end. It's not a problem when you're not there. The more we dip, life is not about, I think of balance, life is not about balance where we walk this line all the time. Balance is where we weave. Why? Because we're human. We have an ego. We have limited thinking. We are limited. Go stand in front of a moving tra a train, a, a car, you're gonna get hurt. We have limited energy, we have limited thinking, right? We're just limited. So we're gonna have limitations. So that means we're gonna be in flow state, we're gonna experience these things, and we're also going to dip out of them. But it's our thinking of when we dip out of them that it's a problem that I would imagine, at least for me, keeps me there longer. Then I'm suffering and struggling and trying even harder to, to, to make something happen. And so the invitation for me to you, Steve, and anybody else that can relate to this is when we have those moments of flow, to bask in them, to give our presence to them, to be aware, to have gratitude, because just like everything, this too shall pass. Just like everything. So then that means the same as with when we're not in the flow when we do feel resistance, when we are getting in our own way. So when we're in those moments, for me, one thing that I've been practicing lately is trusting. Trusting, because almost every time when I veer left, and I don't wanna veer left, but I'm veering left almost every time, I grew from it, I learned from it, there was something I got out of it, and I go, almost every time I go, oh, now I know why that happened. Okay. Because life is, we didn't, life is not us about having these extraordinary moments of joy all of the time. We wouldn't be human. We would have stayed in spirit. Spirit is floating around. They have no body. They have no limitations. They're here blessing us, taking care of us. They're good. We had the opportunity to come in as humans. We're human. We are limited. We are going to have really shitty, hard days. Yeah. And I want, you know what helped me, helped me really, really with that? I was sitting, it was last year in Mexico, and I was sitting with my girlfriend, and we were just chatting, and I go, oh, my God, I just had the best insight. I just got wisdom. Just us sitting there talking, I had insight. I go, I, I imagine myself as a director of my life. Like the old director, I imagine that. I'm, I'm, I'm making my life, Valerie's life. And I saw my life and I was like, wow, if my life were like happy every day, totally easy, I'd get so bored. I'd be like, come on. Throw something at me. Let's do something. I'm the director of my life. Like, I want to grow in this lifetime. Well, if you think about growth, you know, it takes pressure to turn to, to turn a rock into a diamond. It takes, it, takes, uh, it takes a snake rubbing itself against something in order to shed its skin. A butter, a caterpillar going into the chrysalis and feeling this to break free. It's in that. It's not a problem. The more thinking we have that the, the oh, and the challenge, I went through three years in resistance, three. I barely meditated. I just was like sleepwalking. 
I was totally like obsessed and worried about my, my Lyme disease. Three years, I could not connect with spirit. And I was like, Arr, what's wrong with me? Why can't I connect with spirit? And I was like making myself, making myself. And what's amazing is now on the other side, I have these impulses, not obligation, impulse and inspiration. And I'm tapped in. I don't, I don't have to meditate. I want to meditate. But on days I don't, I stop making myself freaking wrong for it. Because I know when I'm ready and when I need it, I'll go back. And when I, when I, when I, when I need it, even if I don't have the inspiration to do it, I trust. And trust is something I've cultivated. I did not have trust growing up. The furthest thing from trust. I cultivate a sense of trust inside of me that goes, even though I have resistance, I'm going to sit anyway, or I'm going to turn on a visualization anyway. And there's something inside of me. It's my body motor moving me. It's not this thing, not my head. So I think if the more you practice and, and let things land for you from this call, Steve, and whoever else this is resonating with, the penny will start to drop. And you'll get your own personal insight about what really lands for you. And the clue is when we're trying to figure it out and we have a lot of thinking that it's a problem, we've probably jumped onto a thought train going to a direction we don't want to go. And so if we just, it's, it's really as simple as jumping off the train. Our ego just tells us it's really hard. But the more we practice, and whatever that looks like, it's gonna be different each time or most times, and it's gonna be different for you than it is for someone else, you'll start to get those moments of going, oh, oh. And then it's not a big deal anymore. Then the flow is more available. Is that useful? Did that help you? Thumbs up, thumb sideways, thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, you, you can tell me the truth. And we can also dive deeper into it if you want to. Later too, or after, or whatever. Do you feel like I kind of met it a little bit? I think he's typing. Um, Alicia said, I just want to read what Alicia said. Um, Thinking we should be further in our spirituality, I feel like I connect to source. I get messages from my guides. I see heart, hear, hear, feel, and messages beyond the self. Like, why am I not astral traveling? Like, I'll, I feel like I left. Be, I'll be left behind. Um, the opportunity to be human relieves a ton of stress for being limited. Yeah, right? Doesn't it? It's like, oh yeah, that's right. I'm just human. We're all just human. It relieves stress, and then it gives us more space our aperture gets wider for our own personal wisdom to stream, stream through. Acceptance and surrender is huge to returning to a flow state. I found, yeah, acceptance and surrender, Sal and Kyle, whoever wrote that, that's a huge shift from catabolic to anabolic. Just giving, like accepting that, like our humanness in that moment. That's another thing, Steve, like when we're in a really catabolic state, just even just like, like I was saying, kind of hold both it gives us the opportunity to have acceptance for that part of us. Like, yeah, there's a part of me that knows what flow is and knows how good it feels and yeah, and wants more of that. And I have this part of me that's terrified or scared or, or is making me wrong and okay. And it just lends a greater opportunity to experience the energy. The energy of acceptance is very different than the energy of wrong, bad, need to be different. You know what I mean? Um, cool. Um, before we, I'm going to close out in a moment. So the thing about, and I didn't go fully into all the resistance, which we can go into next time, but the thing about, you're welcome, Kyle. The thing about, um, 
that thing of the part of you that feels like, you know, for those of you that resonated with this, because this is in the comments, that really resonate with the part of you that's like not of this world, the spirit realm, and wants to, you know, feels more comfortable with the, the astral realm than you do in this human realm. Um, sometimes, you know, I, and this is just me personally, but for some reason, I feel like I'm being told to say this, so I'm going to. Um, you know, I believe in many lifetimes. I don't believe this is just one. I believe that our, our spirits have been in many, many lifetimes. Some of us, many, many, many. And um, in those different lifetimes, we have, you know, come to different challenges. Maybe it's that we were um, burnt for being witches or we were, you know, um, we, we were beheaded because we were trying to speak something new and different out in the world. So there was the, a dark energy, if you will, or a pressing down, a suppressing of this kind of new way of being out in the world, this light part of you being seen, this, um, this uh, star seed being, right? And, under, and I believe time, space, continuum, all times happening at the same time, that's with us now too. And so we come into this life, yes, with our own limitations from our childhood and from, you know, different things that have happened to us. But I also believe that we come into this lifetime with all of that. And there's two things that I want to say for anyone that's experiencing that. Because one of the ways we resist is not allow ourselves to really step into our power. Because if I, and I have this, by the way, if I really let myself be heard out in the world as a spiritual teacher, as a channeler, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. That's my ego. That's the survival, you know? So, so that might be playing out underneath that, if that resonates with you. And what I want to say is what I'm practicing right now is again, holding space for both. Yes. I believe that I have a, a powerful voice and I need to be heard and I'm terrified. I believe that I'm here and I have a message to share. And I have thinking like, you're a fraud. Are you kidding me? So I just practice holding both of them. So that's number one, just going back to that, if that was a useful tool. And the other thing that I wanna remind you, just saying what I said before, you guys, there are more light beings on the planet right now than there have ever been. We have support. You're not alone. So right now, more than ever, it's more safe to be powerful. It's more safe to share your light. And it's more safe to ground in to this new earth and be a powerful spiritual being simultaneously. And I know you feel that if you're like me and a star seed, meaning you know that it's like we fit in, but we don't fit in. We fit in with a certain tribe, but we don't fit in with most people. So I'm saying that I think for some people on the call. So I just want to bring that up too. So um, we're going to um, end the call tonight. Um, I, I just want to say, if you know, just reminding you of the tool, the, the tool, if it was useful of holding space for both, looking for that neutrality, looking for that acceptance to take you from a catabolic space to a anabolic space, just noticing when the personal thinking comes through, the, 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 the invitation in that moment is recognizing it for what it is. It's, it's just thinking. It's not who you are. Like, and some of the ways in which we label ourselves that I didn't say is through the way we feel. Like, I am so guilty. I am so sad. I am so lonely. I feel so guilty. And I want to just point that out. The reason why you feel that is because you have thinking about it. When somebody says to me, I feel guilty, I'm like, well, that means you have guilty thinking. Right? So if you check it in for what it is, like, oh, right now, what do I feel? Okay, I feel, I feel really, I feel really, I feel a lot of regret. Okay, I'm having regret thinking. Okay okay, I'm having regret thinking. Okay. And then it gives space for something different. Does that make sense? Excuse me. Okay. I want to honor time because like we're 17 minutes over, but you guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to unmute you all in case you guys want to say anything. I'm so freaking grateful. This is so fun. Um, I don't, I don't know how to do this. I'm like clueless over here. You can maybe unmute yourself. I don't, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay, at the very <laughs> bottom, you should be able to hit unmute all. Yeah, I don't see that there. though. Are you, click on participants. Thank you, uh, Val. 
Yeah. Thank, Thank you all. Good. It's good to see you guys. We got to go. <laughs> Thank you guys. Absolutely. And remember, next next week, next Sunday at two uh, Mountain Time, if you can join, we're gonna do these weekly. It'll be posted. I don't know if you saw. I posted two short videos. I'm gonna probably post like one or two short videos a week, just giving a little bit more tools. I will also post my hour and 15 minute class from this morning onto my YouTube page tonight if you wanna do some yoga. And stay in touch, reach out with any questions, seriously. Because if you send me questions, I might even make a video about it. So that way it can kind of, because if you had the question, somebody else probably did, or if you had personal insight. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you all so much. Oh, girl. Love you. Thank you. Bye. Peace Bye. 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 Bye.